About a week ago, I created a poll asking what game people wanted me to make for a video, and the game that got the most votes was Space Invaders, so let's get into this. So firstly, Space Invaders is a game, and so to make my life a little easier, I will be using the framework engine thing I created in an earlier video to start off with. To begin in the code, I created an Invader Manager class. Uh, this would be a class to handle the stepping and the drawing of the aliens which will slowly be coming down from the top of the screen. For example, one of the main tasks it will do is check if an alien has reached the edge of the screen. If one has, then it will move all the invaders down and then make them all move in the opposite direction. For testing purposes, the aliens will just be drawn as a rectangle for now while I get this important task working, and I will add the actual sprites in afterwards. So the movement of the invaders can be seen working here, and so now I will now create and add in their sprite sheets. Each alien type has two frames of animation, and their sprite goes to the next frame of animation every time they move. This means that I can use the Invader Manager, which handles their movement, to also update the animation each time it makes them step in their current direction. And this can be seen working quite nicely here. Now that the invaders were added, it was time to add the protagonist of the game, the player. So the player in Space Invaders is quite simple really, it's able to move left and right and shoot projectile at the invading space aliens. So this means I had to also create a class for these projectiles, which both the player and the aliens will be able to shoot. Furthermore, it also means I have to check if a given invader is colliding with a projectile, but this was as simple as using basic AABB collision detection while doing a brute force loop over the projectiles and the aliens. This can be seen working here. The player is able to shoot projectiles, and if one of the projectiles hits one of the aliens, they both will no longer be drawn onto the window. But not only is the player able to shoot at the invaders, but the invaders themselves are able to shoot their own projectiles at the player. To do this, I had to find the lowest down alien in a given column of aliens, as this is where the enemy projectiles would be fired from. To do this, I could get a random column using a random number generator, and then check the column of alien in the loop starting from the bottom until an alive invader was found. A projectile would then be fired from its position. The projectiles and in space invaders also have animations, the animation works fairly similar to the invaders where there is just two frames of animation, so this allowed me to use similar code for the projectiles as I did for drawing invaders. I would later move this drawing code into a separate class called animation renderer, which could then be used by both the invaders and the projectiles. The enemies firing at the player as well as the projectile animations can be seen here. Of course, when the player is hit by a projectile in Space Invaders, they're supposed to lose a life. And when invaders are hit by projectiles, the player is supposed to gain some points. So I created a simple system for this, such as just storing an integer for how many points the player has, and increasing this number when an invader is hit. And then I also created a way for this information to be drawn onto the window. And this simple system can be seen here. Another thing that happens when projectiles hit an object in Space Invaders is a little explosion appears in place of where the collision happens. To do this, I created the class called Explosion, which would hold the location and the lifetime of said explosion. These explosion objects were stored in a list which I could add into when I've already been detecting projectiles hitting objects. And the explosions can be seen in effect right here. If you have ever played Space Invaders, you probably know there are four barriers or shields laying between the player and the aliens. The special thing about these is that they don't get destroyed the second a projectile actually hits them, but rather they are gradually degraded by the projectiles, creating holes wherever these collisions take place. So this got me wondering, how on earth can I actually implement this kind of behaviour in my game? In SFML in the graphics module, there is a class defined called Vertex, which literally defines a single point which can then be drawn onto a window. The nice thing about this class is I'm able to put a bunch of them into an SCD vector and then render them all in a single draw call. On top of this, I'm also able to change the colour and position of the individual vertices, and all of these properties together makes them perfect for the implementation of the barriers. Essentially, I can imagine that the shield is split into several pieces, like you can see in this picture here. The shield itself can also be imagined to be surrounded by a box. So when the projectile comes along, I can test if the box of the projectile intersects the box of the shield, and if it is, it means it's colliding with it. From this, I can work out which section of the shield is being intersected by the projectile. I can then do an even more accurate test to test if the projectile's bounding box is colliding with any of the green pixels of the shield. 
and if the projectile is colliding with the green pixels, then I can just turn the surrounding pixels black to simulate some kind of explosion. This was done by iterating through every single pixel in the shield section and testing if the position of each green pixel inside of the section was inside of the projectile's box. And if it was, then I can choose some random points around the collision point to turn black, thus simulating an explosion. So the four shields can be seen here, and as you can see when a projectile hits them, it causes a little hole in the shield. Another thing that happens in Space Invaders is when the game starts up, the invaders do not all appear at once, but rather they pop up on the screen one at a time until they are all there. To do this, I have to get a little bit creative as I couldn't use a for loop as this would cause the game to not update until they all appear. So instead, I have to use a clock to add the invaders one at a time every few milliseconds, storing the position of the next invader to add as a class member of the invader manager class. And the result of the invaders being added one at a time can be seen here, and I also added in the UFO which flies across the top of the screen every so often as well. So the gameplay itself is now pretty much complete, and the only thing left to add is menus. Creating the menus in that really wasn't too bad, because it just involved using the classes that I had already made for my SFML framework thing, and then just applying them to what I needed. So the first thing I wanted to create was the main menu, which just involved creating a few buttons and then saying when this button is clicked, change to the play in the game state, or when this button is clicked, exit the game. After the main menu was created, the last thing I wanted to do was create some kind of high score system for the game. Creating a high score system is something I had actually already done in the video where I created the game for a university competition, so I already knew how to do it, and I just had to apply it to C++ and Space Invaders rather than Python and the game I created in that video. And well, after doing that, the game was finally completed! Anyways, once again, thank you for watching, source code and the game download link will be in the description below. And lastly, I just want to say thank you to my patrons. So thank you Kello Crazy Man, Snappier Soap 318, Synthetic aka Hayden, Timothy Gibbons, Sumano, Alan Fernandez, Neil Blakey Milner, Alchemic and Nate Brown. So anyways, once again, thank you for watching and goodbye.